Hello friends, welcome to Opa Studies YouTube channel. This is part 104 in Azure Data Factory playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about change data capture that is CDC resource in Azure Data Factory. This is kind of continuation to previous video. We have discussed about same CDC capability using mapping data flows in our previous video. So in this video, the same CDC concept we are going to discuss, which is available as a resource in data factory. This is recently released future actually. So previously it was not there. Right now this future is available as a preview version. So anyone can free to use. And there are couple of resources or couple of source types which can be supported with this CDC at this moment and the list may grow. Okay. So what is CDC? If you have watched my previous video, you already know that. If you have not watched, let me quickly recap. So CDC means, let's assume you have a table. So let's assume this is your source data. So let's assume it is has ID column and it has a name column. And now this is your source, right? And let's assume you have a destination or a sync. Uh, it's also table for now. Let's assume like that. Same ID column and name column. Now, uh, whatever the data, for example, here rows 1, 2 inserted, then both the rows should get insert here also automatically. And then maybe this two row got updated. Okay, it got some new value. So that two row updated value should come even here also. And maybe uh, one row got deleted. Then that row should get deleted from your destination also. So any changes happening in the source, it should automatically reflect in the sync or destination table as well. So this is called CDC, change data capture. Whatever the data which is getting changed, capture that data, whatever the changed data is there, then capture that data. So that's called CDC. And we have seen that how to achieve using mapping data flows. So the same example in our previous video, we have used SQL as a source and the same SQL another table as a destination. So I am going to do the same thing even in this video. So it would be better if you can watch previous video and then watch this video so that you will get a more idea. Even if you want to skip last video, that is fine. If you continue this video and follow along, then you will understand how it actually works. So how to create this kind of CDC in Azure Data Factory. So let's go here. So this is my Azure Data Factory resource, I mean my Data Factory. And here you can see now there is something called change data capture category available. So this category was not available before. So now this is recently launched and this will allow you to capture the data from your sources to sync automatically. Okay, so let me do one thing. Let me explain you one practical scenario. So this is my uh, database and in this database, I have some tables. There is one table called citizens. So this table, I want to take it as a source. And in the same database, I have another table called citizens DW or data warehouse citizens table. So this table, I want to take it as a destination. Now, if you observe the source table columns here, let me open the columns and let me show you here. Now, if you observe in my source table, I have, this is a source table and I have a ID column and name column and you can see ID column is a primary key here. Okay. So let's assume this is my source table. Now let me show you another table. So there is something called citizens DW table. Let me open that and let me show you columns from this table as well. As you can see here, this table contains ID and name columns as well. So same kind of tables, both here also ID column, name column, and here also ID and name. So consider like this is my uh, destination table in which the data should go and land. And this is my source table. From this table, all the data should be taken, whatever data changed, and it should move to this table. So let's see how to implement it. To implement this, always remember, as I said, uh, the CDC capability actually uses the uh, capability of the SQL. Okay, in SQL you have the CDC capability. In our last video, I explained that a little bit. Like you have to enable this CDC for your SQL database using this stored procedure. So this stored procedure, whatever you are seeing here, this procedure helps you to enable CDC at a database level 
and then we need to enable the CDC for the table to which we want to perform the CDC. This will create few objects internally in the SQL database to hold all the changes and to log them and to try to if any partner system is asking it like what changes happened on a table from that objects it can give you back so whenever you enable cdc for any table it will create some cdc related behind the scenes objects okay because it has to track all that changes and uh, these are like a uh, parameters in this uh, stored procedure i am supplying my table name for which I have to enable the CDC and I can mention this supports net changes equals to one this is very important this will lag uh, log all the changes and keep that changes data factory CDC actually use this capability of the SQL to understand what is the changed data and then to uh, run them okay so now let me do one thing so right now if I execute this query here whether to check if your database has any CDC enabled or not you can see let me execute this here and now if you see the results from the results it is clear that my database don't have CDC enabled so now let me execute this query execute this uh, syst uh, system stored procedure which will enable CDC for my database so let me hit this execute button execution completed now if I execute this query to see whether my database has CDC enabled or not you can clearly observe here it has CDC enabled now for my database. So for database CDC enabled let me execute this query that will help you to see what tables has the CDC enabled. Let me hit this execute button and uh, let me try to see the results here. Uh, let me zoom this little bit and if you see here my citizens table don't have any cdc enabled that means right now even if i try to create a cdc object in my database for this table it won't work let me practically show you that so let's go here let me create this new cdc and here this is my cdc name uh, i will make it like citizens cdc that is the name i will give and here my source is going to be a SQL database so all these source type and file formats are supported at this moment and this list may increase in future so let me take SQL database source type and for my SQL database I have already created a linked service I am selecting it the moment you select it it is try it will try to see which tables have that CDC enabled right now no table have any cdc enabled that is the reason it is not able to list any entity that means any table so let me do one thing you can see here right from this result as i said before no table has the cdc enabled here okay so now what i will be doing it i will run this stored procedure enable cdc for table for this table with net changes one let me select this query and let me hit this execute button and once this query completed my citizens table would have cdc enabled let me practically prove that now let's go back and let me execute this query that will list down all the tables along with the cdc status so let me hit execute and now if you see we can clearly see that cdc is enabled for my citizens table here okay so that means now if i create a cdc in my data factory this table should get list let me see that let me go to data factory here and here let me reselect this and let me select back sql database source type and let me select my linked service here for my sql database and let's wait for the load to complete here you can clearly see now it is able to show me my citizens table and it, it also says that it has the cdc enabled in my sql database so that means i am good to use it so sorry i hit the escape button let me create it very quickly again so sql database and my sql database linked service and let me select this table okay so right now this table don't have any data let me go here let me execute a select query on top of it see it don't have any data so that's fine uh, we 
if your source file or if your source uh, table has some data also fine but in let's say in real time if your source table already has some data then make sure you execute a copy activity first to load all that data into your destination table and after that create a cdc on top of that table like what i am trying okay uh, this line i will repeat again at the end of the video to make you sense of it don't worry so what i will be doing it here is let's go back here uh, i selected my source table let me hit continue and here in the target type also it's also a sql in my case so selecting that and same database another table i want to use so i selected a same database and uh, i want to use a different table i want to use this uh, as a sync table or destination table so let me select this continue button now this creates this cdc whatever let me minimize this it creates this cdc and you can see here it shows the uh, source table and uh, destination table details this is my source table and you can see this is my destination table okay and not only that if i scroll towards this it says it has auto map that means it is going to automatically map the columns from your source table to sync table using fuzzy logic technology it will try to map that automatically but i always encourage you to disable it and try to select a key column from your source table there may be some key column on which you can uh, you will be tracking the changes right like primary key and all in my case id is a key column which has a primary key constraint on top of it in my source table so after uh, disabling this uh, column mapping this this icon whatever you are seeing here let me zoom this little bit so this icon will get enable that will show you to map the columns between source and sync so let's wait for uh, auto map i mean let's wait this uh, auto map to disable and load the schema here okay so you can see we have two mappings here i can hit this column mappings and the moment i hit that now i am uh, inside this uh, cdc and it shows column details from my source to target you can clearly see here so this is these are my source columns id and name and these are my target columns id and name okay not only that there is something called keys so from your source table which column has a key primary key that you have to select it here based on that key only all the deletes and updates and inserts will happen so in my case as i said id column is a key column so what i will be doing i will be selecting that id column as a key uh, not only that maybe uh, in your uh, in your destination when you are loading uh, you don't want to load the name as it is you want to perform some transformation what i mean is maybe you have like name as abcd in small characters but everything it should be in a capitals in your destination table that means you want to perform a kind of transformation here so is that uh, possible of course it is possible what you need to do under this mapping methods you can use a functions whatever available here to make that happen or you can even use uh, all this uh, you can see here there are so many functions and this list may grow in future okay so you can do uh, i mean to select you can do a, a kind of transformation also what i can do i can select this upper and then it is going to upper case the name column automatically okay so i am right now i don't want to do any transformation so i am going to select direct only so let's go back here by clicking this so this is my source table my target table i have two columns i mapped them correctly and using this column mapping i selected that key column as well so all set so once it is done you can set the latency also so when you hit set latency then it will ask you like uh, in what kind of interval you want to check the changes in source and move them so i want to do a almost like a real time okay so if any change happen in source then almost in real time immediately that change should get reflect in my sync table so i will be selecting this real time as a latency here click apply once everything is done you need to make sure to publish these changes so i hit this publish button here you can see right now my cdc resource is getting published here so once the publish completes we need to start that cdc the moment you start the cdc from that time all the changes 
will be moving between source to sink whenever any changes happened in the uh, systems or in the source tables see publish completed successfully now let me hit this start cdc button and let's wait for this cdc to start here and uh, once the cdc gets start what you can do you can click this monitor this cdc button here to monitor this or to monitor your cdc you can navigate to this monitor tab under monitor tab now you have a separate section called change data capture preview and under this you can open your cdc and you can uh, check the status you can see right now cdc status and you can hit this refresh button to refresh the status and here it will show from the time of cdc created how many changes it read and how many changes it written back into the uh, destination so let's wait for the cdc to run here so let me go to author menu you can see cdc is yet under starting so let's wait this to start here between it's get started you can see here and in cdc you have two tabs as well here source where it has the source linked service details and the source table details if you want to edit you can edit that by hitting that pencil icon there i don't want to edit i'm just showing it and similarly the target details also available here you can edit them as well not only that you can create new mappings here i created one mapping between these two right if you want to create a new mapping even that is possible here maybe another table you want to take with another table here between that same source and target then you can do that as well okay so there are many changes which you can do actually okay so let's wait this cdc to start here okay once my cdc resource gets starts it will look like this now you can say it shows the stop button that means my cdc is running so let me go to this monitor and let me navigate to change data capture here and you can see my status is running and also i can go inside of that cdc i can see it it has it tried to process already few seconds ago and you can see one green dot here whenever any green dot sees here that means that's the execution it happened and when you hit that green dot it can show you like what changes it performed so right now nothing right so it is not read anything because nothing has changed there in the database let's go to my source this is my source table let me execute this you can see in my source table i have no data actually right now empty so what i will be doing it here is let me try to insert uh, these three rows maybe so let me insert three rows into my source table let me hit this execute button to execute that you can see three rows are inserted here and let me execute select query on top of my table and uh, you can see the same thing here as well you can see that three rows are inserted here okay so now uh, let me go to my uh, cdc resource here and let's wait uh, to uh, run my cdc now in real time to process that changes and take that into my uh, destination table so i inserted three rows in my database uh, source table and if i execute a select query on my uh, destination table right now there is there is empty and now let's go back to here and let's wait for this cdc to run it is continuously running we have to just wait okay maximum in every one minute i mean i am seeing uh, within one minute definitely it is running one execution that was my observation so far so let's wait here you can see it has one execution happened here with a bar here and you can see three changes right when i hit this bar here it says like three changes it is able to capture and it is able to write that three changes into my uh, destination table you can see the same thing here okay so let me do one thing let's go to my database and here this time let me try to execute a select query on top of my sync table so you can clearly see that here in my destination table it loaded all my three rows okay now maybe let's try to update uh, the second row instead of wafa i want to keep name as a abdul wafa so let me update that in the source table let me hit this execute button one row affected now let's try to execute a select query on top of my source table and now you can see in my source table the row 2 has name as abdul wafa 
and if I execute the same select query on my destination table here okay see immediately the changes came even here also you can see that right even my uh, sync table also got the name as Abdul Wafa I can show you that from the monitor as well so let me refresh this here so let me close this let me refresh this CDC monitor here now you can see this is the change so here it has captured three changes and here it has captured one change when I click that you can see that here it captured one change and it was able to write that one change into my destination table as well so now let me do one thing let almost in real time it is happening right so let me delete id3 this row from my source table so let me execute this I removed one uh, row from my source table now let me execute select query on my source table in my source now I have only two rows as you can see here now uh, once the CDC run even in my destination I will be having two rows for now let's execute it you can see for now it has three rows but let's wait for the CDC execution to complete once it executes it eliminates this row automatically so let's wait for CDC to run here so I can refresh the CDC here to see uh, okay still no execution happened in the next immediate execution it is going to take that delete row changes as well here so as I said in every minute it is executing it so you can see here the latest run and you can see it is able to read and write one change this change is will be the same change where I removed id3 row so let me go to my database and let me execute select query on top of my destination table and now this time I can see even in my destination table only two rows that is because I was able to uh, delete that row automatically from my destination table so this is CDC whatever the changes happens in your source it will automatically reflect in your uh, destination table this is very helpful actually you no need to worry about creating a logic creating a pipeline and how to do the implementation setting a trigger nothing everything will taken care by CDC automatically but right now in the CDC resource only drawback is if you remember when I, when we created a CDC my source table has no rows so that is the reason you will see like everything is happening but in your case in real time let's assume by the time you create a CDC if it has 10 rows then on that 10 rows if any changes happens or on if that 10, 10, ro 10 rows if are not moved to destination then nothing will be uh, changed in your destination that means if your source let's assume has ID ID 1 and 2 let's assume it has ID 1 and 2 in your source table when you are creating a CDC but in your destination you are not moving them using a copy activity as a full load if you don't do that then if you remove or if you update ID 1 in your source then that will not reflect in your destination why because that this row is missing in your destination so always make sure if your source has some data try to move them automatically using a copy activity as a full load first into destination and then immediately start your CDC that way your source and sync will be always in sync okay uh, right now that full load option right if you have seen my previous video in the mapping data flow that option is available in the first run it will perform the full load from source to sync and then it will try to execute a CDC logic after that but uh, at this moment in CDC resource you don't have that capability when you are creating a CDC resource nowhere you see uh, perform the full load in the first run kind of thing so that is the reason use copy activity in one pipeline and perform a full load and then start this CDC that way you will see everything works but in future they may include an option within the CDC also itself to perform the full load okay let's hope for the best so that's it in this video I hope you enjoyed how to create a CDC and as I said make sure to enable CDC before you are using it and make sure you perform the full load using the copy activity if your source has already has some data and then start the CDC thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications whenever I add videos thank you so much